Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Kaysen. With me today, the dynamic duo of Daniel Mangana and Alex King. This is your Daily Dose of Happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Now, I do have to say StreamYard seems to be a little tired today. Um, I say that because uh, when I just clicked the button to go live, it said, wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 Really go live, <laughs> but it did. So yeah, we'll, we'll just with, with, with Streamyard today. I think it just needs a break. So we'll be very nice to it. But uh, you guys, are, well, Alex, first of all, she's lighting up the entire screen with uh, another new hair color. Which when I pointed out to her, wow, that looks really good. She says, "What are you talking about?" Because she forgot. <laughs> I forget. <laughs> I change it so often. <laughs> you do change it often, but this one looks good too. I like this one. You, Thank you. you. Have, you you have won me over in terms of all the different colors you put into your hair. It's very cool. I'm very versatile. I can tell, yes. <laughs> and Daniel's very chill, just sitting there drinking his uh, pineapple juice and eating his dark chocolate and feeling very relaxed. Oh, with the yes, pinky in the air. <laughs> yeah. As only one must do. <laughs> <laughs> loving it, loving it. Well, this fits in very nicely with what I had in mind for a topic today, because one of the main concepts in the Taya Bootcamp course, and uh, it's a concept that lots of uh, coaches emphasize, it's, it's a more advanced concept, is the concept of appreciation and not just appreciating the stuff that you like, but appreciating the stuff you don't like, appreciating everything. Um, so, I mean, obviously, as a, a boot camper, I've been working on that more and more. And today, I decided to really go at it. Um, so literally from pretty much the moment that I woke up, I've been trying to appreciate everything I could find. And I was going out of my way to appreciate stuff that I don't normally like. Mm. And it's been an interesting exercise. It's been a very interesting exercise. I've been enjoying it actually. Um, because it turns out that even if you don't really like it, just by going through the motions of appreciating it, you feel better, which is a very interesting thing. I hadn't really noticed that one before. Have you, have you noticed that one, Daniel? I mean, I you're a master. Ask you a, I was actually going to ask you a question before answering. What for you is the difference between gratitude and appreciation? Oh. Right you. Oh. Do you want to go for that one? Coming up a lot. Alex, you want to go for that one first or should I? I don't feel like there is a difference. Is there? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I do think there's a, a difference. For me, it's hard to put into a, a definitive you know, a, a definition, a, a verbal definition, but it's it's the difference between appreciating and appreciating with a sense of, uh, well, you know, I, I owe somebody something. The, the gratitude portion, it's, it's got, it, it's appreciation with a little extra baggage attached. Whereas appreciation mm -hmm. is just pure appreciation. That's, that's the way I think about it. I mean, how do you think about it, Dan? Appreciation allows us to see something regardless of the qualities around it. Oh, that's a nice way to say it. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Because like with Tyre, we appreciate, we detune our transgressors through appreciation. So like I can look for the point of gratitude or I can appreciate something for what it is without even needing to go in and de de decipher what a point of gratitude is. You are what you are and I just appreciate right. you for that. Yes. And for the gifts and for the expansion that is available through you, even if I don't like you. I don't think you have to like something inherently to appreciate it. Which is the distinction that I've been working on the last 24 hours or so, particularly. Um, mm -hmm. be because I, I've always had this kind of a, a distinction in my mind. Yes, there's a difference between liking something and appreciating something. But when I kind of put myself on the spot and said, okay, so what is the difference? It was actually easier to define the difference between appreciation and gratitude, <laughs> to be perfectly honest, because they're so, so close. Um, I think at this point, though, the difference is appreciation is where I can kind of say, you know, I may not like the color blue, but I, I can see why lots of people like blue. It works on them. It's, it's a color that works for a lot of people. So I can see why they like blue. So, you know, if I didn't actually I like blue, but if I didn't like blue, that would be a, a way to appreciate something without liking something. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been trying to, that, that's really the rule I've been applying for the last, you know, 12, 24 hours, whatever, is just, okay, I, like when I was taking my walk today, I was out in my walk, by the way, it was a gorgeous day. Um, and I was going through all five of my senses, you know, I was basically, I was tasting the air, I was doing everything, you know, 
And there was traffic noise in the background. Now traffic <laughs> noise, <laughs> Daniel's doing a little sampling right now, but uh, <laughs> there was traffic noise in the background. And I'm not normally a fan of traffic noise. I said to myself, well, can I appreciate the traffic noise? And instantly I could. I was really actually kind of surprised at how easily I was able to appreciate the traffic noise because what the traffic noise told me was, hey, there's a lot of economic activity going on. There are people driving around, some of them, you know, they're, they're driving business vehicles, others are just, you know, they're going to the store or they're going to, to or from work or, you know, all, there's all this economic activity going on. Well, I can appreciate that, even if I don't like the traffic noise, you know, and, and mm. it was easy. Mm. It was really easy. It's like even like you can appreciate a gift even if it wasn't the one that you wanted, whereas you're grateful for the gift that you wanted. Mm. So like True. when I'm, when I'm, when I'm in gratitude, there's a, a, a focus point of that energy. Even when you have an attitude of gratitude, there's still tends to be, in my experience anyway, an anchor for that grateful attitude that you have with, I'm grateful for life. I'm grateful that I'm alive. That I got up this morning and that gives me a general energy of gratitude, but there was a focus point appreciation is like i don't need to judge you like i appreciate you oh, i appreciate you mm-hmm. i'm not like what's the thing what am i pre- what am i appreciating about you what's the like appreciation it's like oh i appreciate that you thought of me mm-hmm. and you actually went out of your way to go and do this gift not that grateful for the thing because i don't really like it but i appreciate <laughs> it <laughs> like, you know and you're right that's exactly what that is that that is the difference between the two um, I hadn't really thought about gratitude the way you're thinking about it, but you're right. That's a, that's a very valid way to think about the term. I, I think about it often in terms of, well, you should be grateful for such and such. That that that's the way I heard it growing up a lot. You know, mm. you should be you should be grateful. Like you know, there's something wrong with you if you're not grateful. So that that's mm. what I meant by the baggage that I, I see associated with gra- it. Gratitude is a reply. Appreciation requires nothing said first. Oh, that's good. Oh, he's on a roll today. Damn. <laughs> he, he's just reinforcing why I have him on the show in the first place. The man's a Bad. freaking genius. <laughs> I'm going to Thursday. <laughs> oh, I'm appreciating okay. the fact that he's here, and I'm also grateful. At the same time. Love you, love you yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that. so this is a good exercise, and it's one that I, I am appreciating very much. Mm-hmm. Um now, Thanks I've for also been so ungrateful, Walt, but there we go. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> now, there's also an interesting side. I almost said, well, it's kind of a side benefit, but it's also a side effect that I've been experiencing. And, and to be honest, I'm not sure if this is associated with my little exercise or what I've been doing in Thai boot camp in general or what. But I've been finding over the last two days, maybe three days, that not only do I have no desire to be doing the work of running Louise's gardening business and letting stuff slide, but I don't feel guilty about it, and I don't really care <laughs> that much. <laughs> I am mad at you. I am mad at you. I'm going through the same thing. <laughs> Are you really? Yes. I was telling my mom earlier, she was explaining to me about how a friend of hers does it is it, it isn't a two way street friendship, and I've oh. I've been seeing this for years. And I told her about herself because she was trying to invite her to my wedding, and I was like, "For what? She is what type of friend to you? No." Mm. So she ain't getting no orders. Yeah, and I, and I <laughs> so I went on to tell my mother that when it when 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 we attend her funeral and her friends are there, I'm gonna tell each one of them about themselves because I'm getting older. Ooh. And I'm going into my fu forties, and I'm giving less f's every year. So <laughs> you're yeah. tough. I remember yeah. teachers like you in school. I mean, you're tough. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm just saying. I don't have time. I mean, I, I never, never even considered the idea of being graded for my life, <laughs> but that's what you're doing there. <laughs> No, it's just she doesn't, she lets things slide. And it's just like when they, when they show up to her funeral, they're like, why are you even here? You didn't support her at all. Where were you? Should have said something when she was alive. Don't come here now. So friendship then for you, a big, big component of friendship is whether or not you get support from the friend. That's if I support you, you should support me. That's how friendship works. Oh, okay. So it's the trade. 
Yeah. Who wants to be in a friendship where where only one person is supported? Well, yeah, that's actually, that's, <laughs> that has other labels too. <laughs> <laughs> No, codependence comes to mind. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> sugar daddy comes to mind in my head. Yeah, that's another one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there are a few of them. Yeah, yes. <laughs> no, all relationships should have some form of sixty forty, definitely not seventy thirty, but mostly fifty fifty. Okay, all relationships. I'm not sure about should, but certainly the ones that I value are the ones. That oh, the ones that, that I want account. in my life. That's how yeah. they, they, these yeah, are. Yeah, I, I like those better. Yeah. I think it's probably true for anybody, really. That, that's not one that's hard to figure out, is it? No, well, yes, it is I for some people. For the codependence, it is, or, you know, or those other categories. Yeah, it's like when you're, when some people can't see that it's not, that that's not what it is. Some people are like, okay, this friend always comes to me for advice. Yeah, but where where are they when you need advice? But because you feel needed, you feel like it's a successful friendship. Hmm. Okay. You take a step back and look at it. It's not fair. I'm not sure what I think about it, but I appreciate your viewpoint. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm grateful for you bringing it up because I believe that there is a distinction between transactional and relational relationships. And... A balanced relationship doesn't make it transactional. It just means that it makes it a relationship. When it's one-sided, it's not a relationship. It's somebody <laughs> sucking the yeah. lifeblood out of another, which is mm -hmm. just whack. Facts. So I, I, I wouldn't even say that it's it's inviting us to be more transactional in relationships. It's inviting us to actually relate, as in we're both contributing mm -hmm. to not just what you got for me, bro. Right. <laughs> And taking it. Interesting distinction too, transactional versus relational. Yeah, I was learning when I was learning to deal with you mainstreamers, um <laughs> that came up a lot. Because when I when I learned social dynamics and was to not have panic attacks every minute of my life dealing with mainstreamers, I did first and foremost, I was purely transactional because everything was like a strategic okay give them this amount of time and then based on their body language doing this and this, I can respond with this amount of context in order to allow the conversation to move through this many steps. Yep. Then I can interject with humor, step back, let those two people talk. Then I jump in again, close that off and then move into a new conversational loop with that group over there. Mm -hmm. Right. But then relational is just, you're both meeting each other. There's more of a, there's more of a, so transaction is more head based and relational is more heart based. Yeah. And both of them have a oh. role but relationship full stop is still giving if it's purely transactional from a perspective, because it can be transactional and you're still contributing. Yeah. Right. But there's more, it's more a head-based exchange of contributions. Relations, more heart-based exchange of contributions. You can be heart-based and still be a, I mean, what's the, that's what energy vampires are. True. Oh, I'm in the heart, topping up my heart with your heart. Thank you for your energy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so really what we're saying there is there needs to be balance on both of those angles. There needs to be transactional ba balance and there needs to be relational balance. I think you can be purely relational, although there's going to be some aspect to transaction, I, I feel. Um, when you're purely transactional, there is a, there's a soullessness to that. Mm -hmm. There's a soullessness to a purely transactional relationship. Like business can be purely transactional. You give me money and I give you services or i give you service i give you money and you give me services or products or whatever mm -hmm. there's still two people meeting and giving each other right and leaving with something mm -hmm. um, but if it's like like theft it's like <laughs> just exchange no i'll just take that please oh, okay. I see. in yeah. your face right. is the payment mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right there's no there's no exchange there's no mutual contribution well as i think about the relationships that I value, I really do think that both factors are in there. And I, I, I would have expected, I guess, that for most people, both factors would have been in there. Maybe not. Maybe there are some people that, you know, the transactional only model is perfectly fine for them. That's all they really care about. It just seems kind of, I don't know, shallow. Mm. You can. And, and a relational only? Well, okay. 
but part of the reason we like, but part of the reason I like the relationship is because of the transactional exchange. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not I the only reason. The combination of the two. I'm trying to ask myself, can you actually be just one or the other? I guess, I guess anything's possible. Mm. I just can't, I can't quite relate to it. It's the problem. That's why I'm stuck on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that just means you're just not one of those people. I guess not. Yeah, yeah. Right. Whatever those people are. So getting back to the appreciation component of it, then if we're looking at relationships, you don't, I mean, you really don't need to have or be looking at a relationship that's purely relational, purely transactional, or a combination in order to appreciate it. You can appreciate any of them, really. That's what the whole goal of appreciation is. Mm. And the rest of it is really, well, which one do you like? So I think we're right back to that, to where to where I was at the beginning, which is I don't have to like something, but I can appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you guys are thinking about stuff, I, I, well, Daniel, I mean, you, you've been through the boot camp. You're now in the mastery. Um, so you spent some time focusing on this whole question of appreciation. How do you approach appreciation? How do you think about it? So I've gone really far down the rabbit hole with this because I've done some other work around appreciation. And I overlay this, and this is something I've actually been teaching your to my accelerator guys recently. So everybody listening, you're getting something that people pay 25 grand. Mm. <laughs> so, um, when we overlay the law of polarity, okay, law of polarity says that everything's whole. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nothing is one, like nothing is one-sided. Everything has the contrasting aspects to it because that's part of the whole. Mm-hmm. Light and dark exist in the same space. You've got the shadow on the other side of the moon. Uh, up and down are two parts of a whole thing. They're not two halves. So when something's crap, that's only one part of the equation because the contrasting polarity point has to be there also. Mm -hmm. So there is actually um, the energy that I'm putting into something and pushing it away actually can be turned into a way to plug in it into it and pull the energy out of it that allows me to call in more of what I want from the experience so I actually relish when things go crap because that means the crapper something is, the better the other side of it is. Mm-hmm. When I use appreciation and detune my connection to the crap side, it actually reveals the other side of what I want. So every time something looks weird or I don't want it, there's a there's the the, the contrasting experience is also available because of, because of the law of polarity. So I can... Mm-hmm use detunement to cut my connection to the disempowering aspect of it and that allows the blessing to be revealed and then the detune creates a transmutation that allows the blessing to be revealed now sometimes um we have experiences that come up and we can actually use them as things to plug in and pull energy in for us to transmute and actually create more of what we want energetically also so i use appreciation as a plug to get the energy from reality to create more of what I want. There's more levels to it. I've tried to contract something into like a few sentences, Mm. but long story short, appreciation is a way to transmute anything into more of what I desire and prefer. The way you were describing it too, it's it's also, and, and maybe I'm just reading into this here, but the way you said it, it's also a way to kind of talk yourself into getting past that thing you want to detune, that thing that you don't like so much. Yeah. But for me, detunement isn't, oh, God, I need to detune this. It's, oh, there's a gift here. Detuning is the way to access the gift in it. Mm-hmm. Like I said, really, it came news yesterday. So you guys know I've been doing this whole visa thing forever. They finally mm-hmm. canceled my green card after June, July, August, September. After 15 months of trying. Wow. And I was still denied my automatic wow. visa. Jeez. Unbelievable. So I've been waiting all this time. It's like when they stop, when they cut that, then I can apply for my tourist waiver. And they said, no, you can't. But I get it. It's probably because, oh, he's cancelled his green card, but he wants a tourist visa. Oh, yeah. all right, mate. Ah, uh, yes. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, is that, um, like, I was meant to go to a war ceremony in three weeks, which I can't go to, oh, in Hollywood and all this other stuff. I was going to meet 
some of my heroes, Jay Abraham, Jack Canford, who I did the interview with, I was going to get my photos with him. And there was a photo shoot in Hollywood and all the things. And I was getting this award and having a red carpet. Can't go. Wow. That sucks. Um, <laughs> and none of the embassies in Mexico are open for the kind of tourist visa that I would want to get anyway. And then I remembered, I'm pretty sure that nobody's taking anyone from England at the moment anyway. So that could be probably mm-hmm. what it is, but I can't put Mexico down because I'm still a tourist here. I'm not actually a resident. Not actually a resident. <laughs> so, so there's, all this, so there's all this stuff. And for about 10 minutes, I was like, fuck, all the things. And then I was like, if I've got this much discomfort and energy around it, there's a gift here. Ah. And then I started to get excited about what's on the other side of it and really grateful for it even going wrong because now there's this energy that I can tap into. So, yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. It does. No, it it does. Mm. It's it's a good example, too, because Mm. it has a very strong negative component to it, which when we're running into something to detune that really needs detuning, that's usually the way it feels. It feels like... Yeah. All of the things. All of the things. So, so, so yeah. thinking about it in terms of the gift at the other side, that's a cool thing. Now, I presume you actually detuned that. What did you find? There's a thing. I don't look for anything. I just oh you, oh, oh 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 oh. You know, you just assume it's there and just and just go with it. I there. know it's there. Yeah, I know it's there. You don't have to know what it is. Just nope. Okay. I just appreciate it's another opportunity for me to get more energy. And the bigger the discomfort, the bigger the gift that must be available because of the polarity. Now, that is an advanced concept, but that is a cool one. Yeah, I like it. So. What, what, is it what does it take, though, for somebody who is kind of um, kind of learning this concept, right, and, and practicing appreciation for the first time? Because that's going to be a little bit of a, of a leap for them. How, how do you make it that is. leap when, you, when you're trying to learn this stuff? I don't know if you can. You just have to kind of work to it. Yeah. Okay. And I don't really leap on Microsoft. That's true. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's you're not a quantum cool. leaper at all. No. But the no. quantum leaps happen by themselves as you Microsoft more regularly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You keep up the consistency of the Microsoft. But I mean, for me now, I'm like, it's really interesting because I was meant to do my TEDx in New York in November. Mm. I couldn't commit to it because I didn't know what's happening with my visa. Right. They've rescheduled the city, university, New York one that I'm going to be in. So they've got three salons that they're doing on this, uh-huh. this series. But the second one is actually more aligned with my work because it's about dreaming and having uh-huh. insights and introspection. And like, so it's like, oh, wow, see, another gift. I'm actually going to be in the more aligned, the more aligned one. So. Oh, that's cool. So, mm. so there's a case where you actually do find out what the gift is. Yeah, there's gifts that show up, and there are, yeah. I know there are more because the mm-hmm. amount of discomfort that mm-hmm. went there at the time. <laughs> the, last, <laughs> the last, the last two years that I've I've had to cancel stuff and I'd not be able to get into the US and I've missed on these opportunities and all of the things and blah blah blah. But wow, like there must be something really sexy on the other side of this. <laughs> this is really interesting. Uh, not the least of which is because when just before I did the show today. Um, our car was in for some repair and it's an older model. It's a definitely a very older model. It's a 2009, I think it's, so it's a 12 year old vehicle. And they, when they do the work, they always give me a little bit of inspection. Here's stuff that's going on just so you know about and so forth. Mm-hmm. And the inspection list uh, of things that kind of need some attention sometimes too was pretty long and pretty expensive. And when I did a little mental add up, I realized that it was more expensive than the worth of the vehicle. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Which is usually not a good sign about keeping the vehicle around very long. <laughs> Sorry, mate. You hate to stay around. <laughs> <laughs> so I was experiencing just what we're talking about here. I was experiencing that uh, thing that needed to be detuned that, oh, my God, the vehicle. And we still want to get another car. And uh, the finances are in better shape than they were, but they're not quite where I want them to be. And so I started working on the detune. And... I, I'm going to actually re, kind of revisit it after the show based on what you were talking about here to see if I get a different result. But what I'd gotten so far was, well, I had a reminder because I've got this uh, this other thing I've been developing, the software developer who developed this thing for me, and I'm going to start applying it sometime in the next um, month or so. And just thinking about that kind of took all the negative juice out of what was going on with the car. Because, mm-hmm. like, okay, well, yeah, but... Here's the other thing that's going on. And this is, this, this other thing could be, I mean, 
Daniel knows this could be really, really a cool thing. Well, why get upset about it then? And that right. was a big, big deal. That's a big deal because there was a time for me not that long ago. <laughs> not that long ago. I mean, Not like recent in its expression. Very recent. <laughs> like, certainly within the last couple of years where I could have freaked out over that. And now not only am I not freaking out, I'm saying, well, yeah, but it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's a big shift. That's a big change. So now I'm going to, I'm going to redo it after we're done here using what you talked about, Dan, just in terms of there's a big gift at the end of it and kind of see if I can remove from my mind. Well, I know this, this other financial thing going up. Can, can and I ask can myself, I can I still get there? Yeah, can sure. There's not a big gift at the end of it. There's another gift here waiting for me to see it. Ah. It's not so on it's, the other end of so it. It's so it's, pre it. it's present. Yes. The law of polarity reminds us that it's not off there to be manifested. It's already manifested waiting for me to witness it. Hmm. Which makes sense because, boy, oh, boy, we, through our filtering systems, miss an awful lot of stuff that's right in front of our noses. So that certainly makes sense, that part. Mm -hmm. It's already here. As yeah. One of my teachers, David Nagel, puts it, his, his thing is like, it's already here. And when he first used to say it, I was like, okay, cool. But now I really get it. Mm -hmm. It's already here. What made the difference in terms of already get it? Sorry? When you said... You, now I already get, now I get it. Now I really get it. What made the difference in terms of really getting it? By remembering that everything's already here. Everything. Everything's here and now. There was nothing that doesn't exist in the present moment. Ah, okay. And then so, when, when you, when you map that into, yeah, but those are quantum potentials, but then even in terms of tangible physical possibilities and opportunities, because everything's whole, the fact that then I desire to see the one thing means that the physical manifestation, which is half of the whole, is here also. So I actually call it into being by seeing it as being here already. It comes according to my expectation of it being here. The observer effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, well, the observer effect, does, it, it almost isn't even about uh, calling it into being. It's about calling it into your notice, into here it is it for was, me to, to, to see. But it was energy that took form. So when we look at the, the quantum model of things moving in and out of form, that which was out of form came into form because of my expectation. And then my observation of it, by dropping my limiting beliefs, my reticular activating system, me programmed to see it, me being available to it, because it's, I'm, I'm physically in position to actually receive it, then allows me to witness it physically. Hmm, okay. See, this is what I mean when I say he's a friggin' genius. In case anybody <laughs> hasn't figured that part out yet. Uh, I've read a lot of books. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 my friend. You're, it's much more than that. You are a brilliant thought integrator. Mm. Oh, thank you. Mr. That's what you do. You, yes. I mean, yeah, you, you get these other inputs from other people and, and you have, I, I'm sure you have some dynamite teachers and so forth, but you integrate them. And the way you integrate them is uniquely yours. I mean, there are other people who do similar things. They talk about similar stuff, but the way you do it is a very, it, it, it's the Daniel pattern and, <laughs> and it's cool. It's, it's just darn cool. It's so easy to understand. <laughs> he mansplains it. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of manscaping, but mansplaining, I haven't heard. You never heard of mansplaining? Well. <laughs> no, what's mansplaining? Mansplaining is when a woman is talking about something and a man takes it upon himself to explain what she should be talking. So if I, if I ask, he does it to me all the time. If I say something like, oh, Kenny, you should put gas in the car for this reason. He goes, well, yeah, but the reason we put gas in the car is, and then gives me a whole, I know, I just said that. Why are you doing <laughs> to me? <laughs> <laughs> It's when men try to explain things they think women can't comprehend. Uh, but in fact, they already knew. Because we're just awesome. So, so you got to clarify something for us here, Alex. Are, are you praising him when you're talking about him as a mansplainer? Mm -hmm. or are you criticizing him? Or what is it? What's, what's the deal here? Uh, <laughs> okay. No! <laughs> <laughs> no, I catch him in it all the time. I'm like, please stop mansplaining. I understand things. I have a brain. I know these things. 
I think I'll let that one lie. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. So mansplaining just threw me completely off kilter, but that's all right. <laughs> um, so, all right. Well, I'm, I'm just going to bring us back to oh, I'm my glad to introduce a new. I'm telling you guys, look it up, Google it. It's an actual word. Oh, I, I know it is. I, yeah. Well, no, I'm just leaving it there. I'm not going any further with that. It's just... <laughs> you're not going to, you're not going to mansplain what it means. No, I'm definitely not going to mansplain anything. No. <laughs> I, I will tell you this part because I, I don't really think about it in terms of that term, but I certainly know the pattern. I know the, you know, the behavior pattern there. Mm -hmm. And when I interact with Louise, I certainly don't want to do that behavior pattern with her. So we have an interesting dynamic in terms of how I try to find out whether she actually wants me to explain something to her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's quite the thing. Um, it, it can take quite, it, it can take a few minutes to find out. Okay. Because, and I don't even know if there's a term for this. There, sometimes, and it's not just women too, but there, sometimes the other person in the mansplaining uh, dynamic mm -hmm. sets up, sets it up. Like, yeah. okay, here's your opportunity to come in and jump in and, and, and that kind of thing. And they don't necessarily know that they're doing that, but nevertheless, the dynamic is there. Now, Louise doesn't have that dynamic, but she does have, because I think it's because of her background as a therapist. Mm -hmm. She has a tendency to, this, explain and describe things, not explain with to you know, describe, to describe things uh -huh. in a, in a way that's similar to the way her clients would have. Mm -hmm. And so it can sound like she's asking, setting up a, an opportunity for a man's plan, but she really isn't. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. yep. Yeah. So I always have to, I, 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 I wouldn't want to do it anyway. So I always have to wait, like, it, like the old joke, wait for it, right? Yep. You know, she's she's, <laughs> she's describing, and, and the way I do it is I wait for the actual phrasing of a question. Mm -hmm. So if she's giving me a bunch of statements, I'll say, uh-huh, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you can tell with some of them, she, like she's asked, she's kind of inferring, please give me some feedback here. Right, and right. I won't do it until she actually frames a question. <laughs> <laughs> I know the way that this one goes. I've watched this Exactly, one exactly. I'm not going to set that one up. <laughs> See, for me and Kenny, it's very simple. If I say, so what does that mean? That's permission to mansplain. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, that's very direct and straightforward. But if I don't say it, I already know. Say, uh -huh, my business. <laughs> right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. But it, it actually gets comical sometimes because... Like she'll be looking at me and I'll be waiting for her to get asked the question and there's no question. Like, you know, she'll give me like the, you know, the look. And all that. Hello. <laughs> Talking to you. So yeah, I hear you. I hear you. W were you asking me something? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell you the whole relationship thing is a lot of fun. Oh, interesting comment from Anne Marie. Emory Young, who does the Monday show, so that she's going to put up on screen. The appreciation of mansplaining, I guess, is that they still want to have a conversation with you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> So, so apparently that didn't resonate conversation anymore. <laughs> <All right. laughs> apparently that didn't resonate with you, Alex. I have to no, say. No, that felt a little. <laughs> I felt a little desperate to me. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. <laughs> well, I guess if we're going to look at it from a point of view of appreciation, then I guess. <laughs> I mean, it is a form of appreciating that maybe they want to have a conversation. She says, unless it's sport. <laughs> Facts. Uh, oh, that's funny. <sighs> this appreciation thing is tricky. It yeah. is. Because there's so many opportunities to trip yourself up along the way. <laughs> Very true. And in, in the practice of it, you can, well, you learn about yourself for one mm -hmm. thing. And you learn about your own pattern, which is a variable. That's something I recommend to anybody. Learn your own pattern. Especially the pattern somebody else sees about you. Boy, does that make it easier to appreciate them. Mm -hmm, mm 
it's hard to do sometimes. Ooh, what was that appreciation trick you did with me before? I don't know. You'll have to um, give me more of a reminder than that one. I don't know. It was something like, what are the five things that you appreciate about another person in your life or something like that? And then you tricked me and you were like, surprise, those are the five things that people appreciate about you. Oh, yeah. Well, Debbie G is actually the first one who did that with me. Oh, good old Debbie yeah. G. Yeah. You know, she, I think she just asked point blank, name three or five things or whatever that mm -hmm. you like about me. Mm-hmm. And, and you name your three to five things, and then she flips around and says, that's really a reflection of who you are. Yeah, yeah. Which is a cool little trick, and it's a good mm -hmm. way of reminding ourselves that the things we like about other people are things that we like about ourselves. Mm -hmm. Even though we don't necessarily recognize it in ourselves, mm -hmm. it's there, it's still there. Now, does the same thing work if you dislike someone? I don't know. I haven't tried that one. Hmm. If you say if you dislike something about someone, it's probably something that you don't like about yourself. That's most what likely. Most likely. Mm -hmm. It's quite sad. It's a way of testing how strong your relationship is to even pose the question. Mm. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to try that with somebody that I don't really have a good relationship with, unless I really wanted to piss them off. <laughs> 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 Which doesn't happen very often. <laughs> yeah. Because that's, that's the challenging side, asking the other person to say, what do you, what don't you like about me? You know, it's a setup. It is a setup. <laughs> it is. It's, it's not even hidden. It's no. direct. <laughs> like if, if I were to ask Kenny right now that question, he'd be like, nah, nah, I'm not falling for I'm it. not playing I'm that not, game, right? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing it. You're not going to get me today. No. <laughs> no, no, no. 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 Exactly. No. <laughs> but I appreciate that about you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let let me go to you, Alex, about appreciation because I was I was kind of um pushing to Dan about and he gave us this wonderful little mini seminar on it. All right. Um, but when you think about appreciation. What, First of what, all, do you, do you practice it a lot? And second of all, how do you think about it? I do in a passing way. Like, okay, example. Um, our car broke down earlier this week. We needed a new radiator. Was this so, a car theme week? I don't know what's going not, on here. Right? So oh, yeah. <laughs> we needed a new not, radiator. Not me, bro. It, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, it comes in threes, bro. No, That's bro, only I, if you I, believe that. I, 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 I Uber everywhere, so... Oh. Oh, oh, oh. So that's more of a problem for your Uber driver than you. <laughs> yeah, I just pulled right for one. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can you problem. pick me up at this Uber? Because this Uber. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so our car broke down earlier this week, and I knew everything was going to be fine because everything is always fine. But he was in his feelings, and he was like, oh, I don't have the money to do this, and this is going to take out of this, and blah, blah, blah. I was like, no, I'm not going down negativity alley with you. Sorry. I was like, everything's always fine. Everything will be fine. And then not even 20 minutes later, I went in the house, came back outside. He was already on the phone with his mechanic friend who said he can fix it for $200. Mm. Done. And okay. we got the car back today. So so talk a little bit more about the appreciating side. I mean, because you were, you were basically saying, I am not going to go down the spiral about it. Because I appreciate the fact that that we're always taken care of. We're always fine. Ah, okay. So that's where the appreciation was coming yeah. for. So like I said, I do it in, in like a passing sort of way. Like I'm the, I'm not going to that negative side because I'm going to, I'm going to appreciate the fact that everything's going to be all set. And and do you do like Marissa's talking about in the live stream? She says, uh, appreciate the little things in life. Do you do that? Do I? Sometimes, not all the time. Like every, every once in a while, like, um, I do remember a long time ago. This is the, probably the first thing I remember appreciating as a kid. I was very sick. I had a cold. And my mother, I was coughing so bad. My mother gave me a cough drop. And I, I literally said out loud, thank God for the person who invented cough drops. Because I could breathe again. And uh -huh. I just, I, it stuck in my head for all these years. I was probably 11 years old. And I was just like, I, that was my first moment that I remember appreciating something. Consciously. Yeah, consciously, yeah. like out loud right. for everyone to hear. Yeah. 
and having a, way a good before experience. I knew anything about the law of attraction. Yeah, but you had a good experience with it. That because yeah, it stuck. Exactly. Obviously, it stuck mm-hmm. in a big way. Nice anchor. Yeah, it is. That is mm-hmm. a good anchor because you can go, go back to them and over and over and over yeah. again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can and I can see it. I can smell the cough drop. I can feel it clearing up my lungs. It's, wow. a, good, it's a good memory. That's really good. That's strong. Yeah. So, so is that the way you normally do little things? I mean, because you said sometimes you do it. I got the impression it's not like a major activity, but you occasionally do it. Do you do it with things I that could, you are, are repetitive that they have the anchor? More. Not as not as thick as that anchor, but like, let me think of another example. Hmm. Oh, I can appreciate in other people's stuff too. My another car issue. My mom <laughs> got into a car accident er- earlier this week. <laughs> oh my god! And but wait, the story gets better. So she gets into a car accident, and I was like, "Oh, I was like, that's it. I'm taking away your license. You're getting too old to drive. You backed into a car that was parked. I don't like it." So, <laughs> so we were talking about it, and then two days later, she calls me and she goes, "I just paid off my car." It was a car she was trying to get rid of in the first place. They gave her accident forgiveness and she, they paid off, they paid for her, um, scratches that were on the car and it was just enough to pay off her car so she can get a new one. So I'm I know, I, I know that, that particular kind of storyline. Yeah. That's how Louise and I manifested our wedding. Yep. But yep. it's not one that I normally recommend. No, no, no. I mean, nobody was hurt in the accident, but you know, yeah. it was a couple scratches on the car, but. Now the car I, mean, I, I, a I recommend go go right to appreciation. It's, it's easier. It's cheaper. There are fewer injuries. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so by appreciating the fact that no one got hurt in the accident and appreciating mm. the fact that there was all, nothing but a scratch on the car, great things came from it. And that is a good thing. That's a very good thing. Mm-hmm. So, I'm get I'm I'm getting the sense that your stories are kind of probably similar to a lot of people's stories about when they're appreciating and that it's a, it's associated with events that you already have a, some kind of a good twist on them in mm-hmm. your mind. Mm-hmm. In other words, you're, you're not, you're not looking for something new. You're, you're, you're looking for something that you've already been through that reinforces, Oh yeah, I can be appreciative this way. Yep. Yep. That kind of patterning, I think is probably key to learning the appreciation pattern. Mm-hmm. Which is which is just redundant. I just realized, but uh, <laughs> but 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 seriously, we we do learn things easier when we pattern them, and I think it's probably mm-hmm. going to be true for appreciation it, as well. Yeah, you got to get into a habit. Mm-hmm. Well, what not is, just a habit, but it? but it's also it, days. well, it's also the the it, it, more than a habit. It's also what's your particular um your particular angle that you that you can always go to. Mm-hmm. I think that's what goes through people's minds. What what's my angle that I can always do? Cuz I guess it's cuz it's familiar, but yeah. it, it it's easier rather than trying to create new ones. See, mm-hmm. that that's what I've been working on. I've been working on what what new ones can I create? And <clears throat> that's where it's a challenge. Yeah. It's a good challenge. It, and and I I I think that that was where I was learning a lot. That's why I, my days, despite the fact that, for instance, I wasn't really going to work, I was, I was okay with it, which, you know, <laughs> a year ago, forget that, that wouldn't have happened. Um, but I, it, it was because I was literally looking for what's a new kind of appreciation, one that I haven't done before. It, it's a way of, it's kind of like going to the gym mm-hmm. and pushing, you know, pushing more weight than you've ever pushed before. It's, it's pushing yourself to a new level. Um, mm. Kind of similar to the money game, right? You're, you're looking for what your new edge yeah. is, right? So you're mm-hmm. trying to reach out. Where's the where's the next edge? How far out can I go with this thing? That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Which I think is actually the better thing to do in the sense of building the skill up. Because that's what I'm trying to do. You know, that's what we try to do in boot camp. We're trying to build up the skill yeah. of appreciation. Because the more we build it up, the more it becomes just the part of who we are. And then it becomes the easy one. It becomes the easy mm-hmm. aspect of it. Okay. Hmm. Well, anything anything else you guys want to throw in about appreciation before we leave the topic behind? No, don't leave it behind. Carry <laughs> it with you in your heart. I appreciate Alex, but we just lost her connection. She'll be back. Yeah, I appreciate that too. 
<laughs> I think you've been hanging around with us a little bit too long. <laughs> well, you're rubbing off on me. You know, it's a good thing. What can I say? Hey, you know, that's what relationships are about, right? Um, so, oh, um, I do want to make sure we haven't done promos yet. Um, I want to make sure to remind people about some cool stuff coming up. Um, first of all, we have a guest coming in tomorrow and I've been practicing her name. I don't know if I've got the name right. I'll have to actually talk to her and find out if I'm pronouncing it right. But I think the pronunciation of her name is Zehra Maroon. And she is from, she, she's currently in Canada. She is, she was born into a Muslim family and went through a, a long exploration of asking a lot of questions similar to what most of us do when we enter conscious creation circles and even mm-hmm. before uh, about her own religion, about other religions and so forth and ended up at, in a place where she learned about Abraham, loved the teachings of Abraham and so forth. Um, but was still missing a lot of the things that many people find they're missing when, when they see the secret or listen to Abraham or something like that mm-hmm. um, along the lines of how do you deal with, you know, but the fact that we attract stuff that we don't like into our lives. How, how do you handle that? How do you handle the the victim side and all that kind of stuff? And she's got a very interesting take on that. So that's going to be a cool thing tomorrow to to hear what Zehra's uh, take is on that. And then on Monday, this is the really cool one. This is where Bob Doyle from The Secret is going to be joining us on Labor Day. And I'm I'm excited for two reasons. First, this is our very first time we've ever had anybody from The Secret on the program. So I'm mm-hmm. really excited about that. Second thing is... Uh, I, I learned from his uh, promo materials that since he did The Secret, his own thought process, as I think everybody who does this kind of thing, his own thought process has evolved. He has been exploring new ways of thinking about things. And, and he's actually gotten to the point now where he doesn't talk about these concepts w- relating to them in any way to law of attraction or the mysticism side of it, the spiritualism side. or it, It's all um, biology and brain and so forth. So mm-hmm. it's going to be interesting to see what he has to say about that. But, uh, hey, no matter what he talks about, it's going to be cool to have somebody from The Secret on here. And Bob Doyle was one of the, the major players in that, so very good. And then um, on, uh, let's see, I can't remember who's coming on Tuesday, but next Friday we got Dave Strickle coming, so that's going to be very cool. Oh, I know what it was. On Tuesday we have one of the one of 12 master llamas in the world coming onto the program. I didn't know there were only 12 of them, which is really interesting. And I'm not even sure what he's going to talk about, but hey, if there's only 12 of them, I figure one of them's got to be good. <laughs> it's good. So the point is we got some cool guests coming out of the program over the next week so week or so. So just wanted to let everybody know about that. If uh, you're a live streamer or you wanted to be part of the live stream, um, if you, uh, I had this question come up in the boot camp, actually. How do you find the live stream if you've never found it before? You can find it a number of different places. Probably the two easiest ways to do it are through our YouTube channel, um, which you just do a search on LOA today and we'll pop right up. That's where you can find the live stream through YouTube. You can also find us uh, in the live stream through Facebook because through the beauty of StreamYard, we, we uh, live stream to a number of locations. Just go to the LOA Today page on Facebook. That's another good way to see it. But either way, if you want to join the live stream for any of those shows, um, you're welcome to do so, and it also gives you the opportunity to ask questions because we will be drawing questions from the audience for each of those different presenters on our program. So just a little bit of a heads up about good things coming our way. Um, before uh, we, we lost you for a minute there, Alex, I, I'm not sure exactly what happened. Yes, but, um, did not like me today. Okay, well, we'll, we'll report Your that. Your energy <laughs> was too much. Do you know what? Your Super Saiyan energy was too much. That's what it exactly was. That's exactly mm-hmm. what it was. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yep. Well, we've known that for a long time, but StreamYard's a little bit slow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we started the program pointing out that StreamYard was running slow. This fits, right? You know, it took forever <laughs> to get the live stream going. So, yeah, you know, nothing new there. Um, Oh, I know. I, I was asking just before you got knocked off. I'll, I'll just reiterate. Was, was there anything else that you wanted to bring up about appreciation before we left that topic behind, Alex? Oh, no. That was it. We're done. Okay. Then we got, okay. Then we got 10 minutes of free form here. So let's see what, what's going on. Um, what's going on in the, the TV world? We haven't had it. We haven't done anything TV yet. And we normally do that every Thursday. <laughs> I've been watching Marvel's What If. I started and I wasn't that interested. 
Should I stay with it? You might not be, but a couple episodes in, you, you get there. So are there Easter eggs? Yes. Because I started the first one. It's like, okay, cool. Peggy's Captain America. Right. Oh, mm-hmm. look at me. I'm going to do this with the car. Ah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, so I'm watching the movie in cartoon form now with a different main character is basically what you're doing. Surprise, so I didn't like what they did with the I'm first one. Different. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gender roles reversed and it's... And Manifest movie. has been renewed. It has been. Yes. It has been renewed uh-huh. for its final... They, be- they better not else. change their mind at the last minute and say... Maybe we will leave space for more. Just finish the story. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just finish, finish it once and for all. Don't leave us with any cliffhangers. We don't have time Stop for it. The cliffhanging. And and that that's a uh, <laughs> that's a Netflix right manifest. Netflix. It is now. Oh, it wasn't before. No, it was uh, NBC. Oh, okay. So Netflix has picked it up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, but didn't didn't they have a at least for like the third, or the last season, whatever the last season was. The third season, yeah. They did have it. Okay, that's what I well, thought they, I remember. They just recently got all the seasons. Uh, about six months ago, they put they put it on Netflix, and so then the show got canceled. And Netflix is like, "All right, we'll give you one more." Season. Uh, oh, I see. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah. So they they listened to the demand, which is good. Yep. Okay. Because everyone was in an uproar. Mm-hmm. People better not start being silly and wanting to like. Oh, look at me. I'm going to renegotiate my contract and then give us like a weird. <laughs> like, it's don't. the end of the story. You're not renegotiating nothing. Yeah. And certain people that didn't quite make it, I hope to high heaven that they don't, they continue not making it because they're annoying as hell. Oh, <laughs> yes. Seriously. I'm like, I'm over this character already. Yeah. Like when's her death date? <laughs> <laughs> I hope she doesn't get the calling. <laughs> <laughs> but people, the people that watch the show are going to know how hilarious that joke was. <laughs> Everyone else just appreciate me. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well, actually, that's where I was going to go with it because <laughs> I, I'm just curious, you know, where appreciation comes in when you, you start laying down all this law about what they better do. <laughs> I'm just kind of curious about that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just appreciating the fact that they're they're gonna finish the season, and I'm not okay. just gonna okay. just finish it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we're asking. I tell you what, in terms of shows, I caught myself doing something that I don't normally do at this juncture. So, what? when there's a show that's wonderful, mm-hmm. I have been known to watch the preceding seasons just before the new season starts to right. kind of get into it. You know, Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. before they got stupid and ran out of book material and just started going Hollywood. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I watched a few years ago this show called The Expanse, and I didn't quite get it at the time. I was like, okay, whatever. And then I didn't yeah, watch it for either. a couple of years. And, and I was like, oh, I didn't finish that show. And I went back to watch it, and I was like, I'm addicted. This show's amazing. <laughs> and then I went back and watched. So I watched season three, four, and five mm-hmm. in like a month or two or whatever. Uh And then I went back to the beginning because, like, I didn't appreciate this show before. I need to give it my heart and soul. And then I got up to where I remembered because there was stuff happening. It's like, I don't remember what happened because it's been three years. And then I was like, I can keep watching it. No, bro, you just watched this three weeks ago. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) Please. Slow down there, killer. (laughs) Now is not the time to be autistic about this. Because I was like, I felt this compulsion to, like, complete the cycle and finish the thing. (laughs) Yes. Like, you, you don't need to do that. (laughs) <laughs> but I really don't know. But for, from a science fiction perspective, the thing I love about this show mm-hmm. is it's science fiction without all the stuff that just makes it ridiculous science fiction. Right. Like, there's no energy shields. There's no laser guns. It's like actual bullets. and But they're still flying through space, but just in this solar system. So the oh. basic premise, the very, very basic premise is that humans have colonized the solar system. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they've got like space stations, but they're not teleporting. They like have to like put on a vac suit and they have to like go through a tunnel and mm-hmm. the guns have actually got bullets and like they have the whole story about the, the drive that they create that allows them to move a bit faster but it still could take like a couple of weeks to get to Jupiter and people mine on the, but then what's really cool is like there's this whole socio-political thing because mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The working class now are the people that live out on the space stations and they're treated like second class citizens and they're fighting for their freedom. Mm. And then um, some people colonized Mars and Earth was like, we own everything that you mine. And they're like, no, we're going to be independent and we're going to terraform Mars and it's going to be a hundred year project. And then mm. there's like this whole standoff between Mars and Earth. It's really great. Great character development, great mm. um, underlying storyline that's really interesting, um, engaging. And again, I love that it's really gritty and real because there's no laser guns and teleporting and like someone shoots bullets at you. Well, you're going to lose atmosphere because there's no magical shield. It's not shield for 25%. <laughs> no, it's like, Oh crap, we got shot. We better run away because yeah. otherwise we're going to get blown up. Um, yeah. And they're like, use nuclear, pe- nuclear, um, nuclear power to run their, not warp drives with dilithium crystals. It's like, no, <laughs> right. it's, it's nuclear power. <laughs> but <laughs> that's true. That's what they use in, in, Star, in Star Trek. Star Trek oh, I know. That's right. <laughs> oh, I'm just sorry. Sorry to mansplain. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm really sorry. You about just did it so well. <laughs> I did it so well because I did try my explain. But it looked like you were laughing because you thought I made up a word. So no, I was laughing because I know where it's from. Oh. <laughs> but, no, but this show, it, it covers some really interesting things. Like there's a whole thing of like, there's Mormons are in it and they're like running around the solar system telling people about Jesus. It's just really, really funny because it's like 150 years in the future. Earth now is one nation under the United Nations. Mm-hmm. It's really, 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 really interesting. I recommend it. Okay, now, uh, I missed the, the key part of this. What is this series? The, the Expanse. Expanse. The Expanse. It's on, it's on Amazon Prime. Got one more to check out. The Expanse. That one's definitely worth the time. And there's a different I think rhythm. I well, like that one. They've that, got one more, one more season left. One more season left. And I'm sad that mm-hmm. it's coming to an end. But it's based on a book as well. Oh, so okay. like it, it's, okay. it's well adapted, I feel. So so it's two seasons total. Is that what we're talking about? Five so far. Five seasons. Oh, okay. Yeah, and there's one more. One more so, comes some out. Some material there next year. That's that. That's actually a little bit ballsy because, like you say, most science fiction, you know, let's create the the craziest stuff that we can think of, cool tools yeah. and all this stuff. Real, and it's none of this. It's just stuff. this is like it's like you know twenty years in the future or something like that. Yeah, but the thing is, there's little things like they're actually bootstrapping. Like, oh, I need to like. Find a thing to fix this thing. Not like I'm going to use the funny laser doobry. What's it? Do, 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 do. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. Someone gets exposed to radiation. And it's like, right, we need to give him cancer medicine. Not like mm-hmm. some magical thing. So mm-hmm. He's going to have to take this for the rest of his life. So mm-hmm. he's going to like take medicine and stuff like that. And it's like, oh, yeah, oh, this is like really real. It's realistic. Yes, yeah. exactly. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and that would be the draw. Fantastical enough to escape to another world for a little bit. And, and obviously they're drawing in concepts, you know, from you know, like American or not American. Well, yeah, American too, but global history where uh, colonialism is concerned. You take those same themes, put them out into the outer space realm, you know, mm-hmm. so. British and American, you know. Yeah. Why did they do more? The Romans did it. Well, the American model is the Roman model. When you look at what the Romans did, they go for- Pretty much, you, yeah. yeah. You will trade in US dollars. You will speak English. Yeah, the pretty much. Way, or die. Yeah, or die. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Which is what the Romans did. So. It is true. It's very true. Yeah. Even look at the Senate. Everything's based on... The, I think they found, the founding fathers actually based it on... It was deliberate, yeah. They based it on the Roman re- Republic. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was, that was a, a major influence for all the major writers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Adams, Jefferson, all of them, yeah. So, okay, well, good. Um, I'm glad that we were able to do the appreciation thing. I really appreciate that. But um, more seriously, I'm glad we we're also tying it to what we were talking about watching on TV. Because mm-hmm. now we have a real world example. So good mm-hmm. stuff there, yeah. guys. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, see you guys next week. Thank you, especially to live streamers and podcast listeners everywhere. We'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>